A large portion of our modern communication systems run on the idea of dividing information into uniform blocks that travel the network and reassemble back into the original data upon reaching their destination. This concept is known as packet switching, and it came out of the need to build survivable networks. In the 1950s, as Cold War tension rose, the U.S. Air Force built SAGE, a computer network for its radar system. The core design for SAGE was circuit switching, the same format used by the nation communication systems at the time. But the network had a vulnerability, which could lead to system-wide failure by just disabling a few nodes. Considering the fallout, if there was an attack, the Air Force reached out to the RAND Corporation for a solution. In 1956, Paul Byron joined the nonprofit think tank that is the RAND Corporation. There he began working on a solution for a survivable network. Byron believed that unlike circuit switching, which favored a centralized layout, a distributed approach would offer a greater level of fault tolerance, allowing communication to continue along other routes even with a portion of the network disabled. But simply adding more nodes to create redundant paths wasn't all there was to a solution. The system needed the flexibility to change routes without interrupting ongoing connections. Byron settled on the idea of dividing information into blocks. The blocks would independently traverse the network and reassemble upon reaching their destination. If a route becomes unavailable at any point during the transmission, the network will redirect each block to a new path without needing to cut the connection. The concept was so revolutionary that it solved the fault tolerance issue posed by the Air Force and made networks more efficient by allowing multiple users to share the same line, something that circuit switching could not do. But not everyone was happy with Paul Byron's findings. at and in particular made it clear that they had zero confidence that the distributed method could work, much less outperform circuit switching, which had been the tried and true concept for decades. With this kind of pushback from the telecommunication giant, it seemed all but certain that Byron's idea would never find acceptance. But across the Atlantic, similar findings were being made about distributed networks. While working at MPL in the UK, Donald Davis conceived a networking concept similar to Byron's, which he would name packet switching. His ideas would fare better than Byron's and would be used to build the Mark I, the first packet switching network. Word of Davis's accomplishment made it back to the state, where a new interconnected network called the ARPANET was in development. After the decision came that the ARPANET would also be a packet switching network, a renewed interest emerged in Paul Byron's work at RAND. at and once again stated its skepticism, but this time around, the new networking concept was quickly gaining favorability. In 1969, the ARPANET came online and was a success, further proving that Byron's ideas were, after all, sound. As time passed, more and more networks, including the internet, would adopt the packet switching design, whose invention was credited to Paul Byron and Donald Davis. So born from the need to make survivable network, packet switching rose to become the dominant communication concept of the day, a concept which even AT&T now embraces. 